in light of the recent mock Q debacle, 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 I don't know what, how you pronounce it exactly. It may not even be a debacle. It's a debacle for some people. And uh, in the scope of all the problems that could be happening in life and software engineering, it's really a pebble in your shoe type of thing. You can stay on the old version. I don't think I've used any new features that came out in mock cube for like four years. I used the same thing. Setup, return, end of story. Why the heck are new versions still being released? Anyway, we're going to be building our own. Before you can build your own, you need to know how it has been done before. So we have an interface. If we want to mock an interface, we create a class mock math. We inherit from IMath and we go ahead and implement the missing members. You then want to return a value from here. So you go ahead, insert it into the constructor, like add result. You may add more parameters for all of these methods, but for now we only have the add result. Uh, go to your desired method. You place add result here for the rest of the stuff. You may want it to compile. So what you will do is we'll just return default. Okay. Now you have your uh, mock math. You can go ahead to your method bar or actually I math and let's just call it math equals new mock math we will return five. And now we will assert that equals five math add two plus two equals five, right? Running the test and it's passing. Nothing too surprising. Everybody should be familiar with this approach. And anytime you can't mock something using mock you or any other library, this is your option where you essentially just uh, use inheritance to mock the implementation. And uh, that's pretty much the end of story. Now, this took me a minute to write. The big downside of it is that you have to write this and that it adds quite a bit of mass to your code. And then if you want things like sequential return, you may need to add an array here. You may need to do things. And uh, these mock classes can become quite heavy. So we use a mocking library. How do you create a mocking library? Well, first of all, you want to figure out how the heck, uh, well, you want it to look like. So let's say I'm going to approach this from a Mokito approach where I'll say, let's mock a type of IMath and we are going to set up uh, the method. So something like M dot add, uh, I'm not going to be doing a parameter matching by the way. So we'll just have add one, one, and we will say that this should return five. We should get our IMath on the other side and do the exact same assertion. So getting mock from, and uh, let's actually change this to when at the bottom public class mockerino. This can be static and we'll say public static T something that we want to return. We will mock this specific T and then we actually want to return some kind of instance of a builder on which we can call the when method. So let's create a public class mock builder of some kind of type. And from mock, we will return a mock builder. This will just be new mock builder T. And there we go. So now uh, we make sure to invoke this import static. And there we have it. Now on here, we will need a when public for now, let's say void uh, when and actually what we want to do is return the type that we are mocking. So from here, out comes T, give this a body for now, we can return null. And uh, we want two parameters. Now for the first parameter, we are passing a Lambda, but we want to capture the information around which method it is that we're mocking. So actually what we want is an expression. Okay. So we ask for an expression that is a function where the first parameter is T from which we're going to be selecting some kind of function, which will give us a result. This result can be captured on here. This is going to be the expression. And then the second parameter is going to be the result that we want to return. Let's say that instead of null, we'll return default. So it actually compiles. Uh, the code on the top is also compiling. Let's go ahead and run all the tests. And now we have a failing test where we're returning null. Math is null and we actually want to substitute it with some kind of instance. How do we do class generation on the fly? Well, we use IL code and dynamic assemblies. 
So what we'll have to do is create public class dynamic assembly helper. Uh, let's say it like that, assembly helper. We will create a public static dynamic assembly helper. We will assign a new dynamic uh, static dynamic assembly helper. It will be read only and while we're doing our mock builder, like the building of the instance T, that is where we will try to use the assembly helper to spin up this new type. Now in the constructor is where we will create our dynamic assembly. So first of all, we're going to need a assembly name. So this will be Mockerino. Let's say dynamic. Uh, this is our name. We then want a class that's called assembly builder on here there will be defined dynamic assembly we pass it a name and then for the second parameter just uh, give it a run uh, this will give us our dynamic assembly on the dynamic assembly we will define a module and on this module uh, for the name let's actually just uh, reuse the same name that we have for our assembly uh, the module, we will make this a field and then every single time that we're using the dynamic assembly helper, this is where we're going to be creating a mocked type. So we will have some kind of T that we're returning in the end. And the method is actually going to be create mocked, uh, uh, let's say instance type, uh, all of it basically. We will need the generic parameter over here. And the gist of it is we go to the module, we define a type. And when we're defining the type, uh, the sixth or second from the bottom over here, you can see I'm highlighting, you can specify what kind of interfaces can go in there. Parents type, we don't have a parents type. So let's define a type. We will pass a name here or actually, we can just use type of T, grab the name of this, append something like underscore mock. If we're generating many of these and we don't have a cache, perhaps uh, we want to use some kind of good over here. But otherwise, uh, we have uh, type attributes. Uh, I'll just say that this is going to be public, not inheriting from anything. And uh, the interfaces that we implement will be type of T. Okay, so semicolon on the end, uh, we have the name, we have type attributes, we have the parent class that we're implementing, and then we have the interfaces that we're implementing. This is going to be our final type. Uh, using the activator, we want to create an instance of this type, right? We'll have an instance. This instance can be cast to T. This will not be null, so we'll just mark it as ex with exclamation mark and we return the instance, okay? Uh, that's pretty much the end of it. Uh, instead of returning the default here, we can now go to the dynamic assembly helper, which is actually going to be living on the Mocarino. Uh, we're gonna create this instance of T and there it is. Now, if we go ahead and run this, uh, the error that we get here is type must be a type provided at runtime. So uh, the type that I actually have over here is a type builder. So let's actually rename this to type builder. Uh, we'll take this type builder. And I didn't mean to move that. Just take the name. Uh, when we build up the type, we actually have to create it. So this is going to be the type that we actually want to use once we have created it. So let's replace it here. Uh, rerun the test. And now it's telling us uh, that the add method doesn't exist in our iMath mock, which is understandable. We haven't actually given it any of its methods. We have the type that we're getting over here, which is going to be the interface and we can use reflection to get all of its methods. So we get the methods, we can iterate over all of them. And then using the type builder, we can define a method with some kind of name. And for this, we can actually reuse the name of this method, right? Uh, the function is going to be method attributes public because it's on the interface. And another thing that you have to specify over here is if I copy this is virtual. So you're kind of specifying that you're overriding the function on the interface. And then there's going to be the return type and then there is going to be the parameter. So on the method info, you are going to have your get parameters. However, what the define method is asking for is a array of parameters. So what I will actually have to do is go to parameters, 
I'll have to select from each individual parameter its parameter type and then to array this and then I can actually pass this to parameters on here. Okay, uh, this is our method builder and now we can use this method builder to actually add an implementation to it. So on the method builder, we can get IL uh, generator. So IL generator and over here, start emitting IL code. Uh, what IL code do you uh, generate? This is uh, for me a very much trial and error process. Google, there's a lot of things that I just uh, learn, forget, learn again, relearn, remember, forget. And again, it's uh, you don't write this every day. So uh, I think there is no point for me to explain here. Uh, some techniques that I've already explained before anytime I show this is I'll do something like take a look at the IL code over here and try to imitate the instructions. When it doesn't work straight out of the box, I'm going to go and Google. Okay. So when I prepared this video, I basically tried a bunch of things. And uh, what I ended up with is uh, actually trying to imitate this structure. So whenever I create my mocked type, I'm just going to, in addition to adding a method to it and add a field and then just set that field. And all of my methods are just returning the value in that field. Okay. So in addition to the method that we're going to be defining just type builder, uh, get method, no define field. Okay. We're going to define a field. What kind of field? Well, let's tie it to the name of the actual method that this field is going to be backing. If you take method to string, it's going to give you the full signature, including the return type, although it's going to have spaces, uh, parentheses and uh, commas in there. So we're just going to do uh, regex uh, replace this value. So let's import. We will look for any character that's a space, comma, or parentheses, and we will replace it with an underscore. And that's going to be the end of it. This is going to be a field name. So we will define a field of this field name. The type of this field is going to be the same as the method info return type and then field attributes. Uh, this can just be public and that's it. Okay. So this is a field builder. For the things that we're going to emit for the method builder itself is first, we will load the object. So the mocked object onto the stack. So the way that you do this is you go to opcodes and you do load arg zero. So the this refers to the object, which is going to be loaded. And then we're going to load field, pass the field builder as a parameter. And then we can just go ahead and return. Okay, so all of these fields will have their own default values when they're set. So ideally, if I run this now, I should get a zero, which is the value of that backing field. All I have to do now is just to double check which method it is that I'm setting of the information for which it exists on this expression. So let's say I will have some kind of method info target method. And then I'm also going to have uh, some kind of T result that I want to set. And uh, let's add this generic parameter over here. So uh, let's say uh, the first parameter expression, the body is an expression, which should be a method call expression. Let's go ahead, wrap this in parentheses and grab the method. And then we'll just also pass the result. All right. Uh, T also add the TR for the generic method over here. Once we have the target method, we can actually compare it uh, with the method information over here. So if the method information equals target method, uh, we want to grab the field name. So string target uh, field name from the beginning, it's null, make this nullable target field name equals to the field name. So we have gone ahead and set it and now we can actually use it. Once we have created the instance, we can go ahead, take the target field name, make sure that it is not null. So is null or empty not. Take that type, get the field or target field name. Hopefully it is not null. And if it's not null, we're going to go ahead and set the value on, st on the instance with the desired result. Okay. Uh, once we have that, let's go ahead and run the application and our test passes. Okay, uh, that's right, mocking uh, in a 
whole tutorial. Let's say we want to mock something like vector. I will create uh, another interface. And uh, let's say I also need a class for this. Uh, so class a vector prop and a number. And this is going to return some kind of a vector. Let's remove all of the parameters. So I'm going to mock a vector. On here, I will call uh, add. No, uh, let's call it create or something like that, or get vector or something like that, right? Uh, we'll just create a vector. This is going to be a new vector where the number will be five. Uh, the interface that we're setting over here is going to be i another. And when we're going to call create on this and we're going to check the number on here, it is going to give us five. Okay. Uh, let's run this. And there we go. Uh, your own minimal mocking library, no se sequencing, no checking of parameters. Hopefully you can imagine what that looks like. Have an additional default value field or an array where the first value is the default, the second value is the actual value. If there's a whole sequence, uh, then you just need to make sure that you're incrementing some kind of number and you're getting the correct uh, result from the correct position over here and just a bunch of other features and edge cases that you would like to account to. But hopefully this uh, shed some more light on how you can actually go about creating your own mocking library and maybe for the 20% of the features that you're going to be using 80% of the times, it's not actually that hard to do. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section and don't forget to come support me on Patreon. Get the source code for this video as well as my other videos. A very big and special thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. You helped me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.